Hello, everyone. My name is Sue Graham Johnston, and I'm Vice President and General Manager here at Juniper Networks. Joining me today is Magid Elmanshawi, Global Network Manager for Schlumberger. Magid, welcome, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks very much, Sue, for having me. Juniper and 128 Technology is really proud to partner with Schlumberger because you're such a forward-thinking company in the industry, and we're excited to support your digital oil field operations globally. Tell us about Schlumberger and your role in particular. So Schlumberger is an oil field services company, which means that you know, our domain is really in what we call the, the upstream of the oil and gas industry, which is mainly focused on you know, identifying, exploring, and producing oil from and gas from reservoirs. Uh, you know, basically assisting our clients that do that, right? So we don't do it ourselves. Um, so this involves a lot of uh, advanced technology and uh, and being able to serve our customers' needs basically anywhere on the planet where the uh, this these types of uh, natural resources are produced. And it presents some really interesting challenges. I remember when we were doing an installation in the Arctic Circle, our team actually had to get polar bear training on what do you do if you find a polar bear while, while you're out on the installation. So Yes, that's, that's very true. I mean, health and safety and the environment is, are, are really key aspects of, of operations in this domain, really. Um, so yeah, that could involve anything from dangerous gases to dangerous animals. So yeah, yes, that's, that's certainly true. And it, it really is hard to think of an industry that's frankly more complicated than oil and gas, because you've got everything from, you know, hyper competition to probably one of the most volatile market conditions that exist in any industry, and certainly the environmental risk management you just mentioned. Can you help the, the people listening in understand more about the role the network plays in helping Schlumberger and your customers address those challenges? Sure. I mean, fundamentally, this our services are focused on providing data to customers so that they can optimize the, the performance uh, of their operations, really, um, and, and optimizing the, uh, the production of resources. So all of this revolves around data, and typically these the locations for these types of resources are, are, are naturally in very remote locations. So it involves connecting people and equipment uh, from, from very harsh uh, locations to central experts or production systems that need to be able to interact and understand and interpret this data uh, on a 24 by seven basis. You know, the, the operations are extremely expensive um, you know, drill, drill ships, drilling rigs, things like that, as well as the equipment that's required to, to achieve this. So being able to connect the, the remote sites to experts in town and the necessary systems uh, is fundamental to the business. So the network is crucial. And of course, you, we have a lot of people that work out of offices and then you have the normal, you know, day-to-day -day thing, but uh, from a direct revenue impacting perspective, the network is absolutely crucial. And this is really where Juniper and 128 technology comes in. And you know, we've been partnering with Schlumberger for quite some time now. You really are a customer that you know has helped push our technology in new directions. But it would be great if you could share a bit about why did Schlumberger select the session smart routing solution? So if you think about the kinds of locations I just described, whether it's in the middle of the desert or in the snow in Canada or somewhere else in, in the middle of the ocean, they're, they're, they're by nature locations that are very difficult to connect to networks. Uh, so typically you have a few options. Uh, one of them is satellites. Satellite networks are predictable in terms of coverage, but they come with the drawbacks of being extremely expensive uh, very limited in terms of bandwidth, very cumbersome to deploy the equipment for, um, as well as high latency. The other alternatives are, uh, are cellular, which is very unpredictable because you don't know uh, very, with you know, a lot of certainty where you're going to have coverage. And even if you do, it's not a guaranteed service, right? It's just best effort. It just depends on what kind of a, of a throughput you're going to get. It depends on how many people are using the same tower, et cetera. 
So what we really needed was something that could dynamically select and leverage the, right, the, the most optimal network transport available, whether that be satellite, cellular, et cetera, um, and as well, use it efficiently. Because as I mentioned, this, the, the, some of these networks, particularly satellites are extremely expensive. Um, so we need to be extremely efficient in the way we use the bandwidth. And really what differentiated 128T and Juniper from, from some of your competitors is the fact that you're not using legacy tunneling technology uh, and your approach is, is, is based on sessions, uh, which you know, secures the connection without resorting to you know, decades old approaches. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember telling my building manager, you know, we're working with a new customer right now, and I actually need to install a satellite dish on the roof of my building in Burlington so we could better um, test our technology with some of the challenges you are facing. And certainly, you know, here at Landside, we, we actually have slightly more reliable uh, satellite connectivity, but it really is uh, a challenge when you're dealing with all of those disparate types of transports all over the world. Yeah, um, and in fact, you reminded me that you know, one of the things that we faced was that some of the satellite technologies use particular types of compression and TCP optimization approaches uh, with to the network traffic that in fact, some of the other platforms that we evaluated broke, meaning that they, would, they, they wouldn't work effectively. And, you know, 128T was one of the, one of the unique options that actually did not break those types of uh, protocols and optimizations. Uh, so that was another key deciding factor for us. Excellent. Are there any other challenges that you're facing right now that uh, we've helped you overcome? Uh, I think one of the other things that we, we find uh, was, was very uh, beneficial to us to leverage from the 128T approach was your flexible deployment uh, options. Um, so, you know, we can deploy it in the typical edge device that is based on any, any x86 platform that you've certified, including a lot of different vendors. Obviously, now with, the, with your integration with, with Juniper, that brings the additional advantage of having an integrated uh, hardware platform to, to, to provide the, the solution on. And in fact, we've also, even some of our business lines that produce the acquisition systems that are collecting the data from remote sites are now moving to x86-based base platforms, and they, they're actually embedding the SD-WAN endpoints within containers Within those uh, within those virtualized platforms, so it gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of how it's deployed. Uh, the other thing was was really I, I should mention is the engagement factor, right? We had extremely uh, high level of engagement from your technical operations team, as you mentioned. You sent someone all the way to Alaska in our, in the initial stages of uh, of us, you know, proving the solution works um, for our for our requirements. So and that was that was really critical for us is getting that engagement and, and that kind of agility in, in adapting to to some of our requirements. And I think the partnership helped us understand better the scope of what you were facing. I mean, it made for some great photo ops next to frack cats and and in you know kind of barren landscapes. But really, you know, when we talk about the challenges of reliability, it helped me impress on our development team that. You know, for a company like Schlumberger and the industry you work in, it it's not a truck roll if something breaks. It's literally a helicopter flight, if that. And so the technology itself just has to be, you know, really hardened and hands down reliable because you may be running a rig with nobody there, or if there is somebody there, it really is life critical and, and kind of health and safety critical information in addition to the machine information that's being transmitted back across these networks. So the imperative for you know, reliability and connectivity is just at a, a whole different level than it would be for say a traditional retail network. Yeah, that's very true. And in fact, it's also been exacerbated to some extent from the, the COVID-19 crisis that you know, everyone has gone through over the past year or so. Um, with, with uh, a, a very uh, concentrated push from both our clients and, and from Schlumberger internally from a health and safety perspective to minimize the number of people that need to physically you know, go to these sites. Um, we already had a 
focus on remote operations, what we call remote operations for the past few years. But now it's become, you know, more, even more front and center where we need that network that's serving the field to, to work even more reliably than it ever has. Because instead of sending the engineers that typically run these jobs to the rig, now we're minimizing the number of people that go to the rig and having them in town running the jobs completely remotely over the network. So it really has become absolutely business critical. Yeah, it's it's amazing. And Schlumberger has shared a lot in the press about new frontiers that you're pursuing as an industry from rig of the future to lots of cloud-based services. And of course, the whole push on IoT Um, Can you share a bit about what's next in your vision for network transformation for oil field systems? Sure. Let me let me mention from a business perspective, um, you know, there's a few focus areas, obviously people, the, uh, you know, mental and physical safety of the people. And certainly with this kind of work from anywhere type of uh, environment that will, will stay with us for quite some time, probably permanently to some extent. Um, there's that perspective of digital experience. How do you measure it? How do you optimize it? Regardless of where the 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 person working is 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 working from or what type of network connection they have. So that's going to provide some some new challenges that we haven't really faced as much before. Um, from a customer perspective, we're very focused on performance management, delivering the optimal performance for the customer and doing that through digital transformation. So that's where you know, cloud-based uh, services come in, uh, which again, uh, pushes the network to the front. Um, and finally, I would say from a industry perspective, sustainability has taken on uh, a very strong focus for us, uh, both from the perspective of our operations itself and moving towards a, a carbon neutral type of, uh, of, of, of operation, as well as exploring new markets in, in, in new energy, things like, like hydrogen uh, and the geothermal energy, things that are not you know, petrochemical. Um, so that's kind of from the business perspective. So really what we're looking for from the network transformation is, is how can we serve some of these key needs. Um, and for us, you know, we, the, the initial business driver was for SD-WAN and the network transformation was in the field for the reasons that we've discussed. And now we're looking really towards how do we extend that transformation then to the core network that you know connects all of our offices, data centers, and the cloud, um, and optimize really the whole end-to-end experience, whether you're working from the uh, our on-prem offices or whether it's a customer accessing services that we're providing in the cloud, or the or whether it's someone working from home or anywhere else for that matter. Fantastic. I think you know working with Schlumberger has really pushed our thinking about you know, what it means to deliver an experience first network. I guess maybe in a a way of closing here today, um, any thoughts for other customers that are embarking on a digital transformation? I mean, you're you're certainly doing one of the broadest implementations I've seen across, you know, such a range of technologies and, and challenges. Um, but I'm sure many customers, even in, in a smaller, more confined set of challenges, could benefit from some of the learnings that you've had along the way. And any final thoughts to share on that? Well, I think that uh, you know, changing the network, especially if it's a large enterprise network of, of any, any scale, is always a very uh, high-risk uh, undertaking. So I think what I mean, we've, we've spent years basically evaluating, understanding SD-WAN. It's still a very nascent uh, technology. There's not a lot of standards around it. Um, So I think we've been a bit cautious. Uh, We've kind of identified where is the the business case for it first, rather than just looking at it from a pure technology perspective. Um, And we identified, you know, that very clear business case for us. We did some initial quick pilots that, you know, proved that yes, in fact, it does work. and it, and it fits our use case. Um, and that was like where we decided to, okay, let's, let's choose that scope and expand on it and, and provide the value to the business based on that. You know, there may be other business drivers for other customers. You know, other customers may still be, you know, heavy, let's say heavy on MPLS 
and they'd like to move to internet, you know, us ourselves, we're still heavy on MPLS ourselves, but you know, we've optimized our cost a lot because we have a, a very large scale network. Um, you know, that cost optimization was not the initial driver, but for a lot of companies that may be the one, you know, a different business driver um, where they may prioritize doing it on the core. They may have, you know, a, a large number of very similar, you know, let's say cookie cutter type of sites where it's very easy to implement. Um, and there, there's, there's a lot less risk, I think. So I think identifying the business case, um, proving that the technology works in, in the customer's environment with let's say small scale trials first and then expanding based on that. That's great advice. Thank you so much again for joining us today, Magid. It's always terrific to talk to you, to hear what Slumberger is up to. And I appreciate your time to share it with the broader Juniper audience. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Thank you for having me again. Great. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Sue.